Jared White Cotton. Oh, by the way, Jared White Cotton. That's a that's an unusual last name, Jared. Sorry, I I'm sure you probably are tired of people commenting on your name. That's a White Cotton. That's I've never heard that name before. That's pretty interesting. I emailed a question. How cool would it be if he answered it on stream? Well, Jared, that depends. I'm going to go look at your question and I will decide if I want to answer it on stream. Jared, I have a question from Jared Hochman. There, uh, oh, there we go. Jared, Jared with an O. Okay, let's see here. Jared White Cotton. I guess I can't show your question on stream because I don't want to like dox your email address. I don't know. Is that isn't even that big of a deal. I'll tell you what, here's what we'll do. Well, let's just scroll it out of the way. Jared's question is Hello, Mr. Bardwell. <laughs> Mr. Bardwell's my father. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I've been watching your videos for a little over a year now, and it's safe to say I have the FPV bug. After a year of watching your videos and trying to get a grasp on the basics of FPV, I finally decided to pull the trigger and start building a 5-inch freestyle. I have followed your 2022 build series almost exactly, but when I first started getting equipment, I ordered a transmitter first because I wanted to get sim hours. I went back and forth on what transmitter I should get and ended up landing on a Radio Master Zorro. Good choice, since that happened to be the ones you covered and also used in the build series. I ended up getting a 4-in-1, and now I'm having problems trying to load Lewis scripts for ELRS because I got the 4-in-1. That is correct. Uh, the ELRS Lewis script won't work unless you have an ELRS module. You have a 4-in-1. Is there something I'm missing that will let me set up ELRS with a happy model? Yes. Okay, so Jared, very easy. You want this. Get yourself, nope, sorry, 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 hang on. That's not right. You want the, the, oh, mother, son of a, this one. You want this one, the Ranger Nano. What's the combo? Oh, get the combo if you want receivers. You want the Ranger Nano module. It will plug into the back of the Zorro and let you do Express LRS, okay? That's all you need. Okay? That's fine. Yes, yes, you do. You need, you need a, you, you can't enable Express LRS on a radio that doesn't have the hardware for it. Okay, so I'm going to just quick, uh, oh God, now I've doxed your email address. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, it's better than your real address. Um, hey there, Jared. Yes, you do need the ELRS Nano module. Il, the uh, Radio Master Ranger Nano module, it will plug into the back of your radio on the expansion bay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there we go. Now I can delete that question from my inbox, knowing that I answered it, and uh, get on with my life. That's what we do here, folks. That's what we do here, folks. We just take your questions and answer them. Oh, here's a question from Mike Bergman. Good to see you again, Mike. Mike is one of the top commenters on my YouTube channel. I, 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 get a life, Mike. Jeez. No, thank you. <laughs> Do you remember if you could run ProShot on the firmware that came installed on your APD ESCs? For those who don't know, APD, uh, Advanced Power Design, they make Cinelifter. Mostly Cinelifters are what use APD ESCs. They're very big, 8S, 12S, 120-amp, very, very expensive ESCs. Um, did you even have to mess with the firmware on yours? Um, uh, my, Mike, I did not mess with the firmware on mine. Uh, APD ESCs are generally, they come from the factory with the firmware you need. It's not like BL Heli where you're going to be effing around with them. One of the reasons you pay so much for APD ESCs is that APD has designed the firmware to work well. And when you've got an expensive Cinelifter in the air, you don't want to be like risking a desync. I don't know. It's like you're paying for trustworthiness. And so there are times when someone will say, hey, you got to update the firmware on your ESC. But generally, you don't want to mess with the APD ESCs. I couldn't say whether they support ProShot 1000 because I have never in my life run ProShot. And I'm kind of curious why you think you want to run ProShot 1000 instead of running DShot like everybody else in the gosh dang world. Like, uh, is there, what's your motivation, Mike? 
to run ProShot. Um, uh, Blunty's going to keep an eye on the chat and see if Mike answers. And in the meantime, I'm going to get on with the chat. And that's one of the God, gosh dang ways Blunty makes this stream better. Thank you, Blunty. Thank you for all you no do. No problem. Yeah. The two heads are better than one. Um, <laughs> Clive FPV says, my APD 80 amps do support ProShot. So, okay. There's something. But I still want to know why the hell you want to run ProShot. What's your motivation there? Sounds like I'm going to be argumentative. I'm just curious. It is interesting sometimes how my curious voice is argumented, is seen as argumentative. Mike. Oh, Mike. Mike. I, 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 I really, I'm like, I was hoping you were going to go, well, actually, there's a good reason I'm running because, and then I was going to learn something about ProShot, but it turns out 1000 is bigger than 600. So it's automatically cooler. Mike, be, 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 you're better than that. Mike, don't fall for the bigger number better. Stick to D-Shot, Mike. Well, D-Shot's fine. I do appreciate the honesty, Mike. It's true. Uh, Pro Shot 1000, I don't even remember. It like, there's, what is, I don't even care. I don't even care. I, uh, Pro Shot is, I think Pro Shot is pretty, does Beta Flame, it doesn't even support Pro Shot anymore. Can the Pavo Pico O3 antennas be used on regular quads without drawbacks? Yeah, 100%. In fact, let me show you what he's talking about there. What he's talking about is uh, the Pavo Pico. I actually have a review for the Pago, Pavo Pico uh, in in the in the uh, editing process. It's coming. Um, and what Betaflight does with the Pavo Pico is very clever. Uh, hang on, where's the O3 version? Give me the O3 version. Yeah, that's not the O3. I want to see the O3 version, but you've got restock soon on top of it, which means I can't effing. See the picture, you guys frustrate the shit out of me sometimes with your web pages. The so the Pavo Pico puts these little whip antennas, or what I would call them, uh, instead of the antennas that come with the O3. This is 100% fine. These are valid 5.8 gigahertz antennas. They are not circular polarized. That is one reason why people sometimes don't use them with FPV gear, but circular polarized, the, the uh, O3 antennas are linear polarized to begin with. He says, mo he says, I'm on my phone, modem is resetting. Are you back, Blunty? Are you in the call? He is not in the call yet. Um, so uh, it's th this actually doesn't hurt performance as much as you would think because the O3 system already uses linear antennas. Now, in some cases, these antennas will perform worse, but I don't, I think, and, you, and yes, you 100% can, and in fact, they show this. Look, here's Walksnail with a little whip antenna, excuse me, and here's the Vista with a little whip antenna. If you want to save weight, you totally can run a whip antenna like this on your DJI VTX. Oh my God, I have the hiccups. That's the worst. Sub or Gulag, the O3 has a linear antenna. That is correct. And some people, Mo says this, Mo says this, there's another person who's been chatting me on Discord who says that these, they got better results with the little whip antennas than they did with the stock antenna, which kind of shocks me, but that's what two people now have said. So go figure. 